Yeah, he's been knitting too, but. Okay. Let's shut the, <coughs> excuse me, let's shut the eyes for just a moment. Grounding through both sitting bones, sitting head, neck, and trunk straight. <coughs> Chin parallel to the floor, and let's begin to palabati. Either my rhythm or your rhythm, you decide.
Kaylee and Carly in the house at the Mondeer tonight. Turn the eyes approach the front thumb, release the thumb, center the eyes, blink and shut. Allowing the eyes to remain shut, begin to make this going to the left, traveling around the back of the head, varying the size of the speed. starting point, allowing the eyes to stop and then immediately reverse. Turn eyes, approach the starting point, allowing the eyes to stop, shuffling to the back of the skull, bringing the palms together, 
rubbing them together, getting lots of heat, lots of energy. When you feel the heat, <coughs> cup the palms over the eyes, taking the energy from the crown chakra directly through the arms, the forms, the palms, back into the eyes. Once the heat begins to dissipate, gently give the eyes a massage, the temples, the cheeks, anywhere that needs any extra touch or healing this evening. And when you're ready, go ahead. So we're going into our pranayama practice. So same thing. So you can decide if you want the palms facing up, the four fingers and thumbs touch, palms down, elbows underneath the shoulder heads. So make any adjustments. So do any fidgeting that you need to do until you feel very solid. Now you can start, you can do so hum this evening. That would be perfectly fine. Inhaling so, exhaling hum. If you want to just work on some two to one breathing. If you're doing so hum. Also contemplate what that means, right? I am that, that I am. This is one of the Mahavakyas, one of the great utterances. That came to a sage in one of those deep states of meditation. I am an aspect of God. Because of God, I am. That's what your breath is saying. You come pre-programmed with a mantra. Every time you hold the breath, every time you go into some sort of agitated breathing, you're disconnecting from that which you are. I'm not talking this physical form. I'm talking the soul, the Atman. We are all created in the image of God because we all have a soul. arrogant for us to think that us humans are better than other beings, or us white people are better than other white people, or other colors, other races, or we're better because of our educational level, our socioeconomic status, or the family we belong to. All beings are children of God. Because of that, because of God, you exist. Because of God, we all exist.
couple more bounds. We're going to do just a very short contemplation here. So just going back to regular breathing. So I want you to first think about the most amazing present that you've ever received. So this, you know, this is December, right? Christmas, the time of receiving presents, giving presents. And it doesn't have to be for Christmas. Maybe you can't. Maybe there was something super special that you received for Christmas. Maybe it was a birthday present. It's that incredible present that you received. And now, remember, visualize the person that gave it to you. Maybe it was something that you had really wanted. So when you think about that person, your reaction, did you throat punch them? Did you kick them in the gut? Did you say, what the fuck did you give me this for? You probably did not. So the greatest gift that you received is in no way does it compare to the gift that you have of being a human being on planet Earth. This gift from God is the absolute greatest gift. How much do you remember God? How much do you think about God? How much do you contemplate God? How kind are you to yourself? How kind are you to others? And by others, I'm talking all others. Four-legged, no-legged, eight-legged, hundred-legged, two-legged. How separate do you feel from all other beings? There is nothing more important than your spiritual practice. Nothing. No distraction at all should ever come before your spiritual practice. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's family. I don't care if it's jobs. I don't care if it's traveling. I don't care if it's friends. I don't care if it's a gathering. You have received the absolute greatest gift. But we are effectively saying, fuck you, God. And we want more. If you want God in your life, you have to actively pursue that. And nothing should come before that. So spend some time for the rest of the month. How important is your spiritual practice? Where does it come? Everything else should be a distant second. And if you put God first... I will tell you that everything else that you do will become so much better.
So it's very important to think about this, especially this time of year. Have some clarity going into 2021. I don't care if you wake up a little bit. A little bit is better than nothing. But you will only wake up if you do your practice. Okay, we're going straight into a Kriya. You can add Kapala Bhakti here. You do not have to make fist. So loose fist, palms facing up. Make sure you cross the midline, cross it over. and some of the distractions have been ripped from you. Have you gotten more depressed? Have you gotten more agitated? Have you decided to spend more time doing practice? Swami Rama said you must pray, meditate, and contemplate. We say, oh, I don't have time. We have time to surf the net. We have time to watch goofy little videos. We have time to gossip. We have time to participate in politics. We have time to be a part of the world. Ask yourself when you're doing something, is this the best way my time can be spent? Are you adding to the chaos of the world? What are you doing with this gift? God is patient. God will wait for each and every one of us to return home. but you get to decide, have I had enough suffering? Have I, have I added enough anguish to the world? Have I crippled myself long enough with my emotions, with my doubts, with my fears? answer is yes, then you start to appreciate this gift. And every single one of us have time. We're not worried about our next meal. We're not worried about staying warm. So for those of us that have been given more, and everyone practicing with us tonight, everyone that comes to the Mandir, everyone that participates online, we have been given more. Means we have more responsibility.
11. So if you were doing Kapalabhati and you want to continue doing it, do not stop once we get down. If you want to pause, you're more than welcome to pause. 11. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. One, keep the Kapalabhati going, release the hands. So take them to about nine and three. Push the legs forward, keep that Kapalabhati going. If you're doing it, draw the legs in, lift up. So we're going into table if you're at home and you can't see, should be able to see. But the hands are at nine and three. Keep Kapalabhati going, release down, cross the leg, second leg in front. Same thing, you're punching. So the same thing that we just did, opposite leg is in front, keep Kapalabhati going and punch. If you feel like you need to take a break from the punching or from the Kapalabhati, do so, but keep punching. Yoga is the journey to know thyself. And by to know thyself, I'm talking about who you really are, which is an aspect of God, the soul. You are the soul. All these other things that we are so identified with, that is not who we are. Kaylee and I went for a walk today and we were talking about one of the things that Tony Rama said is because you have forgotten who you are. And because you don't remember, you don't know, you suffer and you make others suffer. The way we make others suffer is we keep ourselves steeped in ignorance and we feed that ignorance to the world. Keep punching. You know, I'm sure you guys know this, that they're, they're literally growing pigs to harvest their organs to put in humans. They're learning how to change cellular sequences in the body, right? To stop things like sickle cell. Which, the problem with this is that we're treating the symptom. We're not treating the problem. We have these diseases. We have these things because of the karma. You start to know yourself and things change. 
Keep Kapala Bhakti going. Push the legs forward. Hands at nine and three. Push it up. Table again. Try to keep the breath moving. Head back or chin into the chest. It doesn't matter. Keep slight internal rotation with the legs. So the interesting thing about sickle cell race is that it's more prevalent in the black community. And in Africa, if you have like one, and forgive me, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna really bring this down to very basic terms, but if you have one cell in your body that is sickle cell, like the red blood cell, and one that is not, that is normal, then it combats malaria, protects you from malaria. But what has happened, right, is that you have sickle cells, you have all the red blood cells becoming in that, turning into that sickle shape, which then they're not getting the oxygen, so that creates problems. But you would not have sickle cell if it wasn't your karma to have sickle cell. So we need to understand the root of the problem. This is the same thing. We need to work on self-transformation, not social reform. Social reform is the symptom. We need to get in there. We will never make change that lasts if we don't change ourselves. They asked this one young black child um, about, you know, what if they could change it so that he would never have sickle cell. Very enlightened answer. He said, no, I wouldn't want that. This sickle cell, this disease has made me who I am. That's what he said. Keep Kapalabhati going, release, come down, cross the legs, first leg in front, punch. Keep punching. Keep Kapalabhati going if that's feeling appropriate. So what are you doing? What's happening in your life, right? That you want to just have it taken care of. You don't want to deal with what is really causing it. Right, the, the Maharaja Jaya. We're not asking God to take our problems away. We're asking to understand them, to have right knowledge of them, to have right awareness, to have clarity of mind. Nothing can come to you that is not supposed to come to you. Nothing can come to me that is not supposed to come to me. Maybe instead of asking God to take away our problems, maybe a better way to be would be, give me patience. I think it was Sri Yukteswar that described, or that defined um, tapas, Tapasya, right, as patience. Patience so that I don't react. Keep punching. Do not stop. We are here to transform, to change. Then the world will change. Treating symptoms is not the way. Pay now, pay later. You pay later, you're going to pay with interest.
you know, Ayurveda is the first medicine. They, they were doing surgeries way before we started doing surgeries in the West. They would go with the grain and the, the way the hair grew and stuff on the arms. But you go to an Ayurvedic physician with a backache. So the, say the three of us in this room tonight go to the same Ayurvedic physician with a backache. He's going to look at us, examine us based on our doshas. It's going to be very different. We will walk out with three different things to do. It's the sister science of yoga. Okay, last time, release the hands, push the legs out, nine and three, push it up. Then we have one more punching to do. But why do we think it's okay to grow a pig, an animal, to harvest their organs? Why don't we just grow some babies and harvest their organs? Ooh, no way, we can't do that. Why not? So the soul that's in the baby is better than the soul that's in the pig? God's omnipresent. We think humans are better than animals. That's why we think it's okay to harvest pig organs. That's why we think it's okay to put these animals in these crazy experiments, torture them, but can't do it to humans because we don't believe God is omnipresent. If we believed that, we wouldn't do it. A little bit more, guys. Come on. Okay, release. Second leg in front. Punch it out. This is it. Go out strong. Go out strong. Make it count. Punch through whatever it is that you need to punch through. Punch with intention. Come on guys, this is it. You at home. Pick up the pace too. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead, release, slow, deep breathing, push the legs forward, Pashimatanasana. Slow, deep breathing now. Hello, Lisa. So we did a lot of flushing. Now let's do some slow, deep breathing to really push it out.
we humans have become very desensitized to violence, to hate. So it's not even to animals, right? Think about this in relation to wars. We call killing a bunch of civilians collateral damage. We've completely desensitized ourselves to killing humans. This is one reason it would be great to go back to hand-to-hand -hand combat. Then you see the person that you're fighting. It's very different than dropping a bomb from a drone. But we have so much, so many wars, and listen to this very carefully, guys. We all have a part to play in that. We have all of the wars that are happening, that have happened, since we have all, so however long you've been alive, because we are actively feeding that with, the own, with our own hate and our own heart for ourselves and others. Not to be taken lightly. Get rid of the hate in your heart and we will see the, whor the wars stop. We are all part of this. Okay, slide it back. Fingers can point to the butt or away. Bent legs or straight legs. Push it up, slow deep breathing. I get like the tingles in my hand when I do that for a while. Is there a reason why or is it just? It could be some restriction through the... the... Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. more breaths. So anytime you find yourself in a situation where you think you're better than someone or that, and I'm talking any being, <clears throat> you're actively adding hate and separation to the world. You're actively feeding the wars. Who are we? Have discernment, yes. Have judgment, but do it without hate in your heart. Go ahead and release. Okay, now you have some options here. You can just do some spinal rolls. That's perfectly fine. If you want to, <coughs> you can push up, come all the way up, open, take it down. So you decide you want to come up into full standing. Or if you want to just do your spinal rolls. So pick a pace that you can commit to. We like coming up like mm -hmm. and coming down like mm -hmm. slowly. We must really examine what is in our heart. We talked about this yesterday in class. All of our attachments and aversions, they come from <coughs> our sex, our race, our family, the neighborhood we grew up in, the city we grew up in, the state we grew up in, the country we grew up in the schools we went to, 
from this lifetime, previous lifetimes. These attachments and aversions go deep. 18. 17. 16. 15. 14. 13. Eleven. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Four, three, two, one. Roll it up, <coughs> press back, downward facing dog. So from downward facing dog, if you need a little extra space, Get the hands on blocks, but I want you to spread. So let's everybody make the four fingers parallel to each other. So the fingers are actually going to turn out a little bit. Spread the palms. Press in or press, spread the fingers, press into the palms. Okay. Heels towards each other, toes out. So as much as you can. So don't, they have about an inch or two in between the heels. And turn the toes out to the left and right as much as you can. Okay, walk back about mm, halfway, so maybe about eight inches, I guess. And push back. Take the right foot, make it parallel to the long line of the mat. Lift the right leg up. Don't let the hips shift. Keep the left toes turning out. Just the right leg. So left foot. Okay, maybe come back a few more inches and press back as much as you can. So just a few more inches. Press way back. Lift the right leg up. Draw the toes towards the shin. So push the heel towards the wall behind you. Maybe you can come back now a couple more inches with the hands. Keep the right leg, toes, keep the right foot busy. So toes towards the shin, heels pressed back. So we did this yesterday with the toes in. It feels a little different. Okay, walk the hands back, keep the leg up. Walk the hands back to down facing dog. Keep that leg lifted. Push back as much as you can, as much length as you can. Square the hips. When you bring the foot back, it's going to take that position that it started with. Heels towards each other, toes out. Now do the same thing. So you're going to parallel the foot. You're going to lift it. You walk the hands back a little bit, right? Then you do that a few times on your own. Keep the hips square. So there's no reason to rush anything.
imagine how your life would be if you were never a victim? If you never thought anyone was out to punish you, anyone was out to get you, anyone was out to make your life miserable? If you just really relished in the fact that everything was a gift from God? Praise God in all things. Go ahead and take it forward. Lower the leg. Parallel the feet now. Now just lift the right leg straight up. Have the hips squared. Come really high to the ball of the left foot. Flip the right leg a little bit more. Press the left heel down. Lift the right leg higher. Come up to the ball of the left foot. So when you get to the ball of the right foot, or the left foot, and you're gonna do this on a, a few times on your own, so listen carefully. You're gonna press back through the arms, so you're gonna get length in the spine, you're gonna lift the right leg up. You're gonna release the left heel down, press back through the arms, lift the right leg up. So you're lifting the right leg up a couple of times here. Do that on your own. So lift the left leg or the left foot, lift the right leg higher, press through those arms. When the left foot drops, you lift the right leg, you press through the arms. Do that a few times. We have it, so stay on the same side for a while. So I'm gonna count down from 11 and then switch legs. 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, switch legs. So you remember what to do. When you come to the ball, you lift the leg higher. When you drop to the foot or the heel, you release or lift the leg higher. Both times, you're pressing through the arms, lengthening the spine. Eleven. Ten. Nine. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, release. Okay, now drop down to the left form and then the right form. So still stay lifted, downward facing dog. Push back through the left forearm, push the left arm straight, push the right arm straight. Mm -hmm. Yep, push it back to downward facing dog, yep. Push it straight, and then the opposite arm. Okay, do that on your own. So switching, so now we drop the right forearm down, the left forearm. We lift the right forearm, the left forearm, alternating back and forth. So we now we do the left side. Eighteen. 
16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Press back. Downward facing dog. Drop to the knees. Let's do a few cat and cows. We're actually, so you can do this at home um, without the wall. If you have a good wall space, go to the wall. So do five cat and cows and then grab one block and go to the wall. Or stay at your mat. You decide. So if you have that convenient wall space. So you're going to put your back to the wall. You're going to slide the legs out. So these birds here are still doing their cat and cows. So the first part, we're just going to have, okay, the first part, just put the wall or the wall, put the block just alongside you so you can grab it easily. Okay, now turn so the back is to the wall. Bring the legs forward and you're going to come into a chair pose. So you can do all of this away from the wall. The wall will just make it tons more fun. Okay, so you slide down into chair pose. Now, the deal is you have to keep the back pressed to the wall. Okay, first time that we're doing this, hands on the hips. So find a good solid chair for you. Now you're just going to walk in place. I'm gonna count down from 11, or 18. Keep the back pressed to the wall. Okay, so just start marching in place. 18, 17. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, finish it out. If you need to, press the hands and the arms into the wall. Back presses way to the wall. If you can have a nice, solid, right angle chair, go for it. Okay, we'll start marching in place. 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, keep those hands pressed to the wall, 21, 20, 19, 18 is the butt pressed to the wall, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Grab the block with the hands. Press so press the hands into the sides of the block. <laughs> Keep the back pressed to the wall. Okay, so I'm just going to count down from 27 twice. 27, 26, start stepping. <laughs> 25. <laughs> We're just together. 24, 
Twenty-three. If they both forget. Then... <laughs> so if She's going one. <laughs> So if one jumps off the bridge, is the other one going to jump off the bridge? Typically, I think that's what happens. And how does that work out? I wouldn't know. 23. I think we all know how that works out. 22. Come back again. 21. 20. 19. 18. Oh, that made it so much easier. 17, right? <laughs> 16. <laughs> what made it easier? Laughing. <laughs> I forgot. 15. 14. 13. 12. 11. 10. 9. 8. 7. So I'm so kind. I won't do two sets of 27. 6. Sure. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Lift the right leg up and hold it. 18, 17, 16, 15, <laughs> 14, 13. Come on, folks at home. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Second leg. <laughs> that face. <laughs> My leg birthday is gonna be so nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, legs up. Mimi said, "Oh, <laughs> 18. <laughs> 17. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, foot flat. Come on, just stay here. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Woo. Go ahead and push it up. Come back to the mat. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get to the mat, go ahead and just hang forward, hang on to the elbows. And then lift the arms about six inches. Bend the knees slightly, lift the arms about six inches from the legs. Switch it to the opposite forms in that lead position. Release the hands. So back with the right leg. Bring the arms up and I want you to so you're just gonna hang on to, so you're in this nice lunge. So drop down to the right knee. And hang on, so not at the wrist, but on the forearms. So hook the forearms with the hands and begin to pull the arms apart. See, Ms. Conway said that was quite nice. Oh, perspective. <laughs> <laughs> So really tug those forms apart. If you want to, press through the ball of the foot and come into a high lunge. Or you can stay low. So I had asked Kaylee what her birthday class she wanted. She said, dealer's choice. She said, let God decide. <laughs> <laughs> Put your 
suspicion has decided. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Switch it so the opposite. So you've got it switched around a little bit and tug it. Now, if you're in the high lunge, go ahead, release down to that back knee, release the hands, push that leg straight, and just take it forward over that extended leg for a bit. Okay, listen carefully. So you're gonna bend that leg, slide the hands forward, standing split. Blocks if you need it for the hands. that leg forward, step the second leg back, drop down to the back knee, the same thing, you're going to hook the forearms and tug apart. And as you've been here for a few breaths, if you want to, you can go into a high lunge. It's certainly not required, but remember you want to switch so the opposite form is in that lead position. You're tugging with the opposite hand too. So there's no reason to rush, right? We were here for a minute on this first side. Push that front leg straight and just stretch out over it.
do when you do your asana, right? We do our asana, pranayama, our, our meditation. What do you do with the space that you've created? Okay, we're going to go into that standing splits. One of the other things we were talking about today, Kelly and I, that and we, we've said this so many times, right? All of the body is in the mind, but not all of the mind is in the body. So when we do the asana, we do the pranayama, we do the meditation, we do the prayer, we do the contemplation, not petitionary prayer people. Maybe it's a good reminder we, in yoga, there's no such thing as bargaining. There's no such thing as petitioning to God. That's not the kind of prayer that we do. Okay, listen carefully. Just bring that leg forward. Step back with the left leg. So you're going to, so kind of, so as you step back with the left leg, pivot the foot in, bring the arms up, and then, so kind of you have these triangle legs. Take the arms out. Now, so we come up standing, so we're not really, we just have triangle legs. And you put, pull forward and come back. Pull forward and come back. So do that a few times. Keep drawing the left hip pointer back. Okay, the next time you come up, bring the arms up so the palms face each other. And you're gonna go forward and up. So you're just leaning the torso forward and bringing it back up. Keep everything facing towards the porch if you're here at the house. You just lean forward and bring it back up. So by removing, right, we, we have to start with that gross level. The next time you come forward, pause the head. Now, if it's comfortable, bend the right knee. So you come into Virabhadrasana with two legs, but keep the arms pulled up just like they are. You might feel some firing through the belly region. So you keep the arms about 12 to 18 inches apart. Lunge with the right leg if you can. Okay, now listen carefully. So you're going, <coughs> you're going to push up and then bring that back foot up into tree. So turn towards the front, come into tree pose. Nice. Square the hips towards me. the second leg. So same thing. So you're going to just go forward and back. So triangle legs at first and your arms are out and you just about five times or so. Then you bring the arms together. So if we can work on this gross physical body and remove and create some space, Hmm. 
Nice. And then we really change, right? Because we hold emotions. The body that you have is created by the mind that you have. So if we can create some space in the body, we can start sending some different messages to the mind via the breath with the pranayama. And then we add the meditation What an incredible combination. Okay, bring the eyes up. <clears throat> Take it forward. And bring it up. Doing that a few times. The mind when we leave this world, when we kick it, thanks for shopping, we're done, right? So now you're gonna take it forward this time. And if it's okay, after you've been here for a breath or two, lunge with the left leg. We're not gonna take any of our so-called family that we, you know, oh, are near and dear, our friends, our bank account, the clothing that we love so much, the jewelry that we love so much, the food that we love so much, the animals we love so much. We're not taking any of that with us. But you know what you are taking with you? Your vibrations, your mind. And that's going to directly take you to the next realm. Couple more breaths. Okay, we're going to go into tree pose now. So pivot forward, bring it to tree. We always hear the um, afterlife stories, right? Where it was flowers and light and all this golden stuff coming, you know, when we're dying. There are a lot more stories out there where it wasn't quite so bright, wasn't quite so peaceful. In many of these stories, the person, when they came back, changed for the better. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stay standing, but lower the hands so the palms are going to face each other, out and in. So you pick a pace that you can go to. There's a story of, and I don't remember, you know, the, the specific details, but there was this professor that um, he apparently was just quite the dick. And he taught philosophy or something, and any he really tried to beat down the students who had faith. And he had this reputation of just being an asshole. And he had a near-death experience, and the way he described it, it was quite horrific. And he realized that that was his energy, right? His vibrations that he brought with him when he was leaving this body. What was that? Okay. I can slap myself. Okay. Um, so he was just this really rotten person. He really projected a lot of hate, a lot of anger, a lot of animosity. And when he died for you know that near death experience, it was all coming back to him. And then he came back and he realized, oh my God, I've got to change who I am. This is, 
I, there's more, I cannot do, I cannot be the person that I was. And because he changed, he ended up, he became more righteous, right? He began to do the right thing, like we were talking about in class yesterday. And he ended up, um, just he lost everything. But he said that when he lost everything, he gained everything because he was so much more content. So when you die, it's something to think about. What are you taking with you? We often talk about, right, if, if I die right now, you know, if I'm angry or agitated or whatever, right? But start randomly asking yourself when you're having some of your thoughts, if I died right now, where would this project me? Where would this take me? Am I okay with that? Because if you're not, then change it. It's just that simple. You've been given this incredibly powerful, beautiful gift. The greatest gift you can ever receive is to be that, to be human. What are you doing with this gift? Because if you're wasting it, you're effectively saying, fuck you, God. I got better things to do. My allegiance is to creation, not to the creator. Okay, the next time you come to your center, push the hands up. Bring your right leg up, bend it. Bring the thigh as close to the belly as you can. Keep the torso nice and straight. Focus on the breath. You must kiss the snake, people. Okay, here. So just, you're going to just drop it down nice and slow and bring it back up. 11, 10, 9, Slowly lower it down, second leg comes up. By kissing the snake, you have to examine your fears, which means you examine your attachments and your aversions. You examine your preferences. You get to the root of the problem. Quit treating the symptoms. Treating the symptoms is going to keep us coming back.
two, one, bring it back up, pause and hold, torso nice and long. Release the foot, open the arms, swan dive down, hang on to the elbows again. Switch it to the opposite forearm movement. And go ahead and bend the legs. Push the legs forward. So drop all the way to the bum. Push the legs forward. Paschimottanasana. Pajimottanasana for about three breaths and then go to bridge pose with a block. We're going to be in bridge pose with the block for a bit, so. How important is God to you? So on a scale of 1 to 10, just answer in your own head. So now I ask you, in a 24-hour day, how much time do you spend in prayer, contemplation, meditation, asana practice, pranayama? How much time do you spend sleeping? How much time do you spend eating? How much time do you spend surfing the net? How much time do you spend listening to music? How much time do you spend 
watching, binge watching TV or some series. Talking to people, gossiping, daydreaming, wishing you had this, wishing you didn't have that. What percentage is greater? Be brutally honest here. So then I ask you again, how important is God to you? God should be number one. Everything else should be a distant second. The most important job you have is to know yourself. All the other jobs are temp jobs. All the other jobs are distractions. They keep, they're here, they keep you busy. But remember, they are distractions and they are temp jobs. You will have different distractions and different temp jobs next lifetime. But guess what will be the remaining thing that you will do? You still will have to know yourself. At some point in some lifetime, you will discover yourself. And by self, I mean the soul, the Atman. So you decide. How much effort, how much time, how much energy you're putting into this. These temp jobs that you're so attached to now, you won't even have the same temp jobs. You'll have a different family next time. You might be born in a different race, on a different continent, in a different, on a different planet. I'm not saying fulfill your responsibility. You have a responsibility. I have a responsibility. By all means. But when that temp job starts interfering with your practice with your contemplation, with your prayer, with your meditation. Then it becomes very detrimental to you. Let's take a quick happy baby. Squeeze the legs in, feet flat, legs together. <coughs> Lift the butt up, shift it about two to three inches to the right. Drop the legs to the left. Keep the knees stacked on top of each other. That's going to keep the knees or the hips lined up. Open the arms like airplane wings. You can look to the left, to the right, or to the ceiling.
your center. Lift up, shift to the opposite side. Knees stack right on top of each other. Any adjustments? So the body can become totally quiet. Totally still. space in between the eyebrows, relax. Temples, relax. Eyes, nose, mouth, relax. Chin, jawline, ears, relax. Neck, throat, Relax. Shoulders, upper arms, elbows, forearms. Relax. Wrists, palms, fingers. Relax. Tailbone, lower back, middle back, upper back. Relax. Chest, belly, all the internal organs. Relax. Hips and buttocks. Relax. Thighs, knees, shins, calves. Relax. Ankles, heels, arches, tops of the feet, balls of the feet, toes, relax. The entire body has become totally, completely relaxed. is easy to sit and meditate. The most difficult part is to practice bearing insult and injury, learning to adapt, adjust, and accommodate. These are the teachings of the great saint and sage of the Himalayas, Sri Swami, Sri Swami Shivananda Ji Maharaj. You can do your prayer, you can meditate, spiritual practices all by yourself, but what about your attitude when you deal with people, when you work with them day in and day out? That is where you have to prove that you have achieved something in your practices. If a person practices adapting, adjusting, accommodating, 
He would never point a finger at others and blame them. Even if another person is at fault, if you know how to adapt, adjust, accommodate, you are able to rise above these situations. The most difficult thing is to bear insult and energy, in injury. That needs a tremendous capacity to keep the mind under the thumb. Do your daily work, deal with everyone, move with everybody, be in the ocean, but you must learn to surf well. And now returning to the breath, directing it to the toes and the fingers. And gently begin to wiggle them. Allowing the body to stretch and to move, and when it is ready, bringing it to a seated posture.
cherish those that God cherishes. Let me forgive those that God forgives. Let me serve those that God serves. Let me love those that God loves. Thank you. See you tomorrow.